Hi, and thanks for joining me. It's been a long time. Today, I want to discuss the different placement strategies Onyx allows us to use. Placement strategies are options that we can choose to change the way and order that our jobs print in the queue. Now, I currently have three jobs waiting in the queue, as you can see, and they vary in size and also number of copies. The first placement strategy is the simplest, and that's print jobs individually. This treats each file as its own job, and it'll print all of the copies of that file all at once. If we go to the options here, move this over, uh, we can see that print all tiles at a time. If you have a tiled job, right, or all copies together. Um, so we can choose uh, if I have a tile job, I can print all of the tiles together. I can print the copies together, right? It's a personal preference. It's based on your production. But the important thing to remember is even though I have three different files in my queue, Onyx is only going to print this top file, the six inch by four inch file in the queue all by itself. And here's the interesting thing. If I put this job on hold, oh, and if I hover, I don't know if, uh, if you know this. If I hover over this, it'll tell me what file it is. Now, I'm cheating a little bit because I actually have two files with, uh, with the same name. I just loaded it in twice and changed the size. Um, and the other thing that I can do, and it's weird because it's grayed out, uh, but if I click on this eyedropper here, it actually brings up a, an enlarged version of this where I can actually see exactly what's going on. It's, it's kind of cool. But if I put this on hold, which is going to kind of simulate if I printed this job, if I hit print now, now, print now, um, if I put this on hold, watch what happens. The next job will automatically set up and that's five copies of this 15 inch by 10 inch print now. And then it would move on to the last one, which is this 27 by six inch all by itself. Right, so all of these are all by themselves, right, individually, which is right there in the name. Now we do have options regarding placement, even in this mode. Uh, notice that I have justification options, right? So left, center, and right. Doesn't really matter in this case because I'm kind of filling up my, uh, my, my artboard, or, or not my artboard, but my media width. Um, but if I had, you know, if let's say I've got 30 inch material here, let's say I have it set up to be, you know, uh, my file is only 20 inches wide, I can choose whether it's centered or, or right justified as well as left. Um, but I also have the option to add a gap between individual copies, right? So right now it's zero and we're going to go back to that a little later in this video. But right now I have no gap uh, set between there. But this is kind of neat. I can also automatically start printing. I'm not going to turn this on, um, but what will happen is it'll automatically immediately release any job in the queue. As soon as the rip operation is complete, it'll send it to the printer and then go on to the next job and the next job and the next job. The next option for placement strategy is group jobs together. Okay, this strategy is going to print all the files in my queue and... Oh, Yep, there it is. Uh, all the files in my queue, assuming they're all set up for the same media and print mode, which they are, but it'll keep each file's copies together and it's it's done in order. So it's gonna be the six by four, then the 15 by 10, then the 27 by six. If I come over here, let's say I wanna print this first, the 27 by six. If I move this up to the top of my queue, now, it's printing in that order. So it really just follows the order that I see right here. And it keeps all of those jobs together, just like the name. The, the RIP is never going to split up a job so that some co copies of, let's say, this one right here, where I've got uh, 24 copies, it's never going to split it up. So I have, you know, eight across the top and then 16 somewhere else or anything like that. Um, and, and, as I said, it's going to print in that order right, that I have set up right here. I have most of the same options 
uh, here as I did for print jobs individually. But notice now, instead of just automatically printing, uh, I can trigger a print command when the rip has been idle for a set time. So let's say uh, 30 seconds of not sending, not ripping a job or printing or anything, um, it'll start. Uh, or I can do area based, right? So when the area is above a certain percentage full. So in general, I would use the time-based option if I'm printing roll to roll. And I would really only use the area-based start if I'm printing something that's sheet fed. And the reason for that is because uh, the percentage full numbers will change on the fly as we add more length to a roll to roll job. So as I add more jobs in, it'll actually change that percentage. And it could be that I never hit whatever trigger that is that I have set. Um, I personally, I almost always print manually, but those options are there if you want them. Um, I should also mention that unless you have a very specific workflow that needs this, um, you should always make sure that horizontal copying right here is on. Otherwise, this is going to happen. Look at my preview on the right when I hit OK. One copy, one copy, one copy, and look down here. It's not putting them side by side. Every single copy gets its own row across my media. Um, and I'm going to turn that back on before I forget. All right. The last strategy we're going to discuss here is the most complicated, but in my opinion, it's also the most useful, and that's conserve media. This strategy will try to fit your job queue into the smallest area possible. And we have a lot of control about how it does that. So let me switch that. And the first thing you should notice after I switched here is that this small job here was split, right? I have four copies up here and then the rest are at the bottom. If I go back to group jobs together, you can see that I am using 80 inches of media. It's kind of tough to see. Uh, but I'm using 80 inches of media and over here if I turn conserve media back on that changes to 76 inches. Now it's not a big savings uh, but this isn't a particularly long file either and depending on the geometry of your actual jobs you could save a significant amount of media. Now if I go into the options here you can see that I now have a couple of new choices and uh, best fit and then allow rotate, which is grayed out at the moment. So let's choose best fit and see what happens in the preview. In this particular case, I actually increase the media usage from 76 to 78 inches. And again, that's just a function of these particular jobs that I have loaded uh, and the, the geometry of that jo those jobs. But notice now that the bottom job no longer has anywhere I can cut perfectly horizontally all the way across my roll in order to split the print apart. That's, that's what's known in the industry as a Dutch cut. And sometimes that can be a problem depending on, your, depending on your finishing processes. But in many cases, this can lead, not in this case, but in many cases, it can lead to much more efficient media usage. Look, if I go back and turn best fit off, you'll see that now I don't have Dutch cuts anywhere. I can cut across, I can cut across. This is kind of a weird case because I can cut across here on the big job and here on the big job. And then I can split this, but all the way across here, I can do that as well. So let's go back, turn best fit on. And then what I'm gonna do here is, let's see the really, really cool part. This is the part I really like, it's allow rotate. So I turn that on and now watch the preview. And we can look at this nice and big, All right? So I have most of my jobs rotated in 90 degree increments to maximize efficiently efficiency. Uh, but if you look closely down here, um, you'll see that it didn't rotate everything. Uh, this queue is a weird case, uh, and I'll show you something a little bit later where it'll make more sense. But in, in any case. Uh, Onyx will figure out what copies of what jobs need to be rotated in order to save the most amount of space. 
And again, I, I've gone here, again, not a huge savings, but I've gone from 76 inches, now I'm down to 75.1 inches. Uh, and if you recall, before I had allow rotate, that was actually 78 inches. Now, for allow rotate, you do need to make sure that one particular setting is enabled, and that's done in the quick sets dialog. Quick sets are like templates you can open your job into. You're always opening it into something. And in this case, I'm going to show you in the default quick set, uh, which if you're not choosing a quick set, you are choosing default. And I'll show you where that option is. But you would need to change this in any quick set that you have where you might use that, that allow rotation. So I come to my quick set. I'm choosing my default. I go over to edit. And then if I click on this advanced button in the lower left hand corner, I get a lot of advanced options. And if I look down at print, I can choose output. And right there, this is what I need to have turned on process to allow rotation during print stage. This has to be checked or the rip will never rotate your job regardless of what you choose in your placement strategy. I'll okay my way out of that. All right, there is one other placement strategy, um, and it's this one right here, Photoba Dicus or Flexa, Flexa uh, Cutter Marks. This is for people with automated roll-fed cutters, but if you have one of those, you should already know that how that strategy works, and I don't have a, cut, a cutter to show you the end result, so I'm going to skip this one. Um, it, it's, it's kind of an edge case and you would only use it if you have those particular types of cutters. All right, the last item I want to show you is an option for all the strategies and that is space between copies. So if I do want a gap between individual copies of a job, here's where I would go to actually change that. And I'm going to set the horizontal space here to a quarter inch, oops, quarter inch. And notice that because this little chain icon is enabled, it means that the vertical space is automatically going to change to match. If I click the chain, I can actually change so that the, uh, the, the horizontal and vertical uh, gaps are different, but I'm gonna keep them for, for here. I'm gonna uh, keep them at, at a quarter inch. All right. Now, if I go back here and hit okay, now, if we look at the preview, um, obviously I'm using more media right? I'm at 81.3 inches because I've added that quarter inch space between all my copies. But now inside the preview, it's a little bit more obvious with that with respect to allow rotate, right? Both for this medium sized one and also for this small sized image. And again, I, you know, it's a geometry puzzle, right? Uh, the rip decided that with that gap, there was enough spacing there that, that it needed to rotate some, but not all. Right, I can sneak some of these in, and it's just it's a space efficiency issue, okay, um, and and that's that's really that's a that's a good example of how allow rotate would work, um, in this particular case. So that's it for this video. Uh, I I hope I've made placement strategies a little less scary for you. As always, thank you so much for joining me, and please reach out to me if you have any questions or comments or if you have suggestions for any future videos. Thanks.